loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say on say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, right, Tell pause right there. So as we read carefully, we see where Jesus sent two disciples. Yes, yes. Amen. In verse 2. He sent them to loose it. Hmm. What are you saying, God? Hallelujah. What are you saying today, God? You see, God had a need for a donkey. It came up to that time where he needed an ass. He said to to go lose it. Verse 4. All this was done. 
done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying tell ye the daughter of zion behold thy king come unto thee meek and sitting upon an ass and a colt the fall the fall of an ass tell me daughter of zion daughter of zion represent the elect of god the people of the Jews, those that embrace the true Messiah and believe in him. He was addressing the body that believed. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. Hold on, but before they went, did you see meek? Meek, it's not, it's not missing. Tell you, the daughter of Zion, behold, the king coming on to me, meek, the very characteristics of our God, one of the fruits of the Spirit. Meek represent no, humble, or meek. What a character to have because we know it's from Daniel. You see, the horse. A lot of times we see the king coming now. He's riding a horse. Prideful, puffed up. You know, he looked, he looked, this looked like royalty. Come on now. Come on now. The horse makes you look strong and big. But when you come on a donkey, what is this? Donkey? Is the Messiah? Yeah. Come on. Is the king? Come on, donkey. <laughs> but you see, mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the whole of his deportment, both in life and in death, was a pattern of meekness, lowness of mind. And sitting upon her ass was just evidence of his humility. You see, the patriarchs did it. Moses rode an ass, Abraham rode an ass. It was law back then for them to ride in an ass. But the horse came around Solomon time. Solomon, when he first got ordained, he rode on an ass. But then he started riding on a horse. Because you remember, he, he built a house for Pharaoh's daughter. He started mixing with these women who was teaching him certain things that we shouldn't even be partaking in. So he now implemented the horse. Right? Jesus said, let me go back to the, the good old days when prayer and fasting used to work. When, when, when I used to believe that my prayer is being answered by God. You see, right now we have a bunch of believers that say they believe, but really don't believe. All right, I got a phone call. I'm like, so what's going on? You know, my auntie told me not to tell you nothing because I wanted to see if you could pick it up. Okay, I guess I'm a psychic now. <laughs> You call the psychic hotline. I said, sure, okay. So you tell me what's going on. Okay, well, this is what's happening. And start going down the list of what's happening. Hmm. Okay, hold on, let me call. Call, set up with somebody to call and pray with her. You know, the person called me back with a report. Say, Pastor, yes, this is, and God allowed me to do this. I said, okay. So, so we're going to go get up to church tomorrow. I said, awesome. I said, get the address. All of a sudden, she went SOS, which I'm, I know that means missing. <laughs> oh, so you want to call the psychic hotline so you can get a word, right? I, I'll work for right now, but then your lifestyle ain't going to change. Right? You, you're going to go and you're going to open up the Psalms because I believe you got Psalms open right now with a bottle of water next to it. Or you might have, come on, come on now, you get more. I was born just, I was born yesterday. You got liquor, you got white and liquor all over because you believe it's running out of nothing. But have you even tried prayer? Have you even tried what actually worked? He said, these can only be removed by prayer and fasting. But it will, it will, it will hurt your flesh. So you don't want it to hurt. 
the right word today. You see, you are comfortable in your lifestyle. But when truth comes, you don't want to hear it. You want to be to look like I got power. I am the horse that Jesus came riding and I'm the donkey. Let me be the ass for Jesus. But I want that is humility. I ain't got time to want that power. I'm looking for where humility is. That's where I want to be. Come on, Holy Ghost. Mm. All right, let me share something with you. Since you, in my past life, well, should be how much I was in one state. My sister, I was living with my older sister, living nice, we got a big house in Orlando, and we always taking trips. So we were going to New York, Brooklyn, to spend some time. And we went to the store to buy games, board games. Because you know, we, my family, we big. I mean, my family's so big that when I was in jail, I'm talking to the young man, and he told me his story. My mom is in the courtroom waiting, and he's talking to the young man, girl, how they move here and they're homeless, they come from California, they ain't got nowhere to go. And I'm waiting to tell my mom that they're coming home with us, and she already out there, but they tell me that they're coming home. That's how big my family is. We just, let me tell you, we full up that house. My mom helped people. All right? So we got all these board games. We bought Ludo, we bought, we bought, uh, Monopoly, but one of the games was a Ouija board. I didn't know about it. I just thought it innocent. And we bought it at Toys R Us. Toys R Us. I remember that. You remember that? I remember that. Yeah. Toys R Us. You know, you probably don't even know who Toys R Us. That's what I remember. Toys R Us is about kid code, and you see all these toys, and you just like, whoa. And you see every toys that have been advertising for years, and you know you can't even get one, but you're like, oh, at least I got to play with it. But here we go. We're home, and we play, we play with the games. And we play with the Ouija board. And, you know, we, two people were touching it, and they laughing, and we all laughing, like, you moved it, no, you moved it, you know, and we just laughing, and then, we had a babysitter. Yeah, we were born in. So we had a babysitter. So the babysitter came in because she traveled with us soon. She came in and all of a sudden I see her like, oh, no, no, no. she starts speaking Spanish. Like, so are like, what's, what's wrong? She's like, this is something real. They have this shit from Ecuador. She's like, they have this in my country. This is something real. This is witches use it. This is nothing, nothing to play with. We're like, yeah, right, whatever. We still play with it. Then she comes and shows us, okay, I played it wrong. Turn off the light, light candles. And then we started to really ask this thing some questions. And all of a sudden, somebody in the room voice changed to a man voice, and this is a woman. So possession took place, because this is open, this, this game opened doors. Possession took place. This person started to speak like a man. Every boy girl in the room took off running. Fear took the place. One of, my, one of my brother, he was behind the door with a thing of salt pouring on his head. Because in treating her, if you pour salt along the door, along the window, you know, it's supposed to keep our spirits. So he was making sure it was good for him. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> but what I looked at was who said, let us pray? Not one. The thing that actually works, we don't want to do it. We don't want to call out on the Holy Ghost. We don't want to call why? Because it's going to cause our flesh to do something that it does not want to do. Our flesh don't want to be in obedience with God. Everything becomes an offense. Because our flesh don't like the correction. 
not much left. Not knowing that we are tied in one spot, holding ourselves. Jesus is coming by and saying, I want to use you. I need you. But it's that you hold on to that religious mindset. You won't let it go. Shake it off. Break it off. Too humble. Yeah. 
That's too low. My king can't come and be born in a manger. My king got to be coming born in a six million dollar mansion. Hallelujah. 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 You see, hallelujah. The religious mindset. I'll give you, give you three. How to spot a religious mindset. Religion is an anti-evangelism spirit. When you have a religious mindset, you against evangelism. Matthew 23, 15 warns the religious sect of the church that they lose more souls than they win. Their converts became double as hellish as them. So, you thought you was a good example. But you're just making them more hellish than you. Because you're not truly delivered or healed. Come on. Some of us, we like the circle we're in because it doesn't challenge us. When I went to the, to the summit TV Jake's had, I'm like, man, these are the men I would love to be around. Because it would challenge me to be better. You see, sometimes we can switch up our circle. If we become the everything, everybody likes what I do and nobody can correct me and everything I do looks like it's the right thing, some more. Come on. Jesus didn't even get it like that. That's Bible. So when they're speaking highly about you and make you feel like you're so good, you better check that circle. You better run. If you don't better, you better run. Because some of it ain't true for you. Probably you're not living truth. Probably you're not showing them truth. Because some of us, we're not a camouflage. We know how to be. In this group, I'm going to look like this. When I get over here in this group, I'm going to look like that. And then we just confused. confuse. Second, religion hinders positive relationships by putting a bad taste in the mouth of unbelievers. Taking the fire out of marriages, stopping the flow of God in worship, fellowship, and making children hate serving God. To, and, and, and making children hate serving God. To sum it all up, judgment will start in the house of God. Remember, it was religious spirits that nailed Jesus to the cross. Let us not, let us not religiously or repetitively serve God. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So religiously, repetitively doing the same thing, expecting different results. He's looking for someone to worship him in spirit and in truth. Can we find the spirit and stay there? Can we get in the spirit? We look bipolar sometimes. One day we hide in God. We got the right word, the right messages. And then the next day, I can't tell who's your God. Can we have a consistency when it comes to you as a believer? Can we have a consistency? I know we might slip and fall, but don't stay there. Get a break. Get a, apologize for what we did in front of. Say, look, what I did, I was wrong. I should have never did that. I'm sorry. schizophrenia. One minute, the people bless the name of the Lord and cry Hosanna to the highest. In another breath, they yell, crucify. Spiritual schizophrenia. One minute, we and then as soon as you leave church, 
you, the real you comes out. I want to hear you pretend like you is temple. You see, because you're confused, you're thinking, this is the church. Oh, so you thought it was about the building. But let me help correct you. You are the temple. As an individual, whenever you go, you got to be a representation of his kingdom. You are the temple. So when you're in front of your friends, when you have work, when you, wherever you go, you can have church. Because you're there. Zechariah 9, 9 to 10, it, it talks about the king of peace. Hallelujah. I'm going to read it. Can you read it, prophets? Zechariah 9. Holy Ghost, thank you, Lord. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king coming unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a cloud, the fall of an ass. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be, and the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. My God. So, here comes the king riding in on a donkey. It was prophesied. So it doesn't say that they didn't read it. Because nobody could nobody could go hand in hand when it comes to these Jews and knowing the, the Old Testament. They studied this thing before they even reached a certain age. So here it goes in the Old Testament telling us that the king of peace is coming in on a donkey. But still, even when God showed up right in front of us, religion will have us say no. That ain't God. Even when it's written in the word, we want to fight it like, no, that is so like God. If the Jews could be fooled, what do you think? It's so easy to be fooled. You're seeing it. You're saying, Hosanna. You even put branches down and put down, you put your clothes down, because you know it's royalty. You know what the word said, but instead, you want to fight it. Why is that? Sometimes that religious mindset will have us have a place. If I'm not doing it, it ain't God. It's a power thing. If I'm not doing it, it ain't God. I've seen it happen. Some people are so bewitched, they won't even get up and clap. The Holy Spirit could be in their movement. They won't get up and clap until they see their leader get up and clap. If I'm not doing it, it ain't God. That religious mindset will have us looking at man and not looking to God. That religious mindset will have us looking for the day I can't wait till I see you for.
Jesus needed him, he was ready. He didn't buck, he didn't jump. Loose me from it, Lord. 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 Didn't have to 
the donkey could have bucked, the donkey could have could have chucked. Because it says that the donkey is easily startled. They said, they said, listen, they said the donkey's behavior. If you're not the owner, you can't just approach it any anyhow. These are two strangers. Loose. Loose them for what they were stuck to. Because Jesus had need. Jesus had need for you. But only until you break loose. Only until you break loose of your own mindset, of your own ways, your own, the own, the own religious ways. If it ain't you, it ain't God. If it break, break, break. Hallelujah. I want you to jump to your feet, those of you who believe. Those who believe. Because you see, what I realized in the Bible, there was a lot of sick people. The Bible said there was so much sick people that you can't even put all the miracles that Jesus did in the book. But the thing with sick people, they know that they were sick. They found themselves in position, whether it's at the gate called beautiful, whether it's by the water, waiting for the angel to come down and trouble it. The sick people find themselves in position. How do you find yourself in position if you didn't know you had to make some type of movement? Come on, even the one who they have to carry came down the roof. Thank God for his friends. Somebody said, thank God for my friends. Thank God for my friends. When you got friends that truly want to bring you into the presence of God because they know you need deliverance and healing, thank God for my friends. But now that you're here, now it's going to require something. God didn't ask you for money. God didn't ask you for your offering, your, your cash. No. What God is asking for is something tangible. He said, I forgot what it's so like when you shout. He said, my daughter, my son, he's looking and searching for somebody who knows how to worship him.
He's making us new right now. Because you made the steps. You did it. You did it. You said it. You confess it. So because you confess it and you said it, you made the move. So now he's bringing it up right now. And he's making it new. He's renewing your mind. He's renewing your heart. He's renewing your life. Right now he's doing it. He's setting you free. And as you renew us, and you make us into new creatures, any man that is in Christ, he is a new creature. Hallelujah. See, this is how God works. This is the timing of God. You see, we were, some of us were out there doing it, busting hell wide open just yesterday, just a couple minutes ago. But this is the God we serve right now. Because you presented your body and you became a living sacrifice. He's willing to forgive you right now. Make you new right now. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't get distracted. Listen to God. Yes, right now he's making you new. Right now he's doing a new thing in you. Right now he's showing you how to break the shackles and the chains that kept you bound. Right now. Who the sunset free is free me. Right now. And now that we are all who believe that we are new creatures. Because not everybody going to get it. It's sad to say. It's sad to say. If Jesus was to come right now, even at the height of the spirit where we are right now, if Jesus was to come right now, some of us wouldn't even make it. Because God, we can't fool him. We can't trick him. He's a God of the heart. He sees the hidden parts of us. We can hide from each other, but we can't hide from God. And it's so simple just to say, God, forgive me for how I feel. It's so simple. So open your mind and say, God, look, I don't love you. Just open your heart and be real with God. That's how he, he works. He wants you to be real because now, because you're real with him, he can now be real with you. And he can now fill every void. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Now to everybody that's in this room who believe that God just did it for you and made you a new creature. I want you to shout like never before. I want you to shout like never before. Loose me because now I'm ready. I want you to shout like never before. Loose me on the count of three. One, Holy Ghost. Two, Holy Ghost. Three, Loose me!
He said, I'm telling you now. He said, the reward is that I'm going to fill you all with a love that passes all understanding. He came in on a donkey. The donkey represents peace. The Prince of Peace is filling you now. He's filling you now with a shalom. Oh. Hallelujah. He's filling you with his peace. Lord God, we were yearning for this. Lord, we were thirsting and hungering for this. Lord God, no one can love us like you. No one can fill up in void like you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for making us new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.